All right. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Daniel Cow, uh, and I'm a data journalist, graphics editor, um, and front end engineer for Commonwealth Magazine based in Taipei, Taiwan. Um, for the past three years, I've had the privilege of calling Taiwan home. Um, a, a, an island that is currently the global linchpin of semiconductor manufacturing, um, the latest commodity in a long line of commercial and imperial ambitions that have put Taiwan on the map for the past few centuries. Um, cartographically, uh, cartographically, Taiwan has an incredibly rich and complex history. Um, some of the earliest maps, known maps of Taiwan from the Portuguese, Dutch, and Spanish settlers called this island Formosa, uh, a name given by Portuguese sailors in the 1540s. Um, Taiwan was colonized by both the Dutch and the Spanish before being driven out near the end of the Ming Dynasty. Uh, but as an island far off beyond administration from the Chinese heartland, um, Taiwan was largely ignored by the Ming Dynasty. In fact, Taiwan didn't even show up on many Chinese maps until the Qing Dynasty. Um, here are some of the maps from the Qing Dynasty. And eventually, uh, the Japanese would actually take control of Taiwan during the first Sino-Japanese War, um, hoping to turn Taiwan into a model colony and capitalize on Taiwan's economic potential. Um, for 50 years, starting in 1895, the Japanese colonized Taiwan. Uh, they built the island's public infrastructure, including a railroad system, financial system, education system, and more. So, uh, the map in the middle is actually uh, one of the earliest Japanese maps of the railroad system that they built here in Taiwan. Uh, but when the Japanese lost World War II, uh, Taiwan was transferred to the Republic of China, um, which to this day governs Taiwan after a civil war against the People's Republic of China. And, and so today, under the jurisdiction of the Republic of China, Taiwan includes the archipelagos of Penghu, Kinmen, and Matsu Island. So as you can, so many people don't know this, but um, yeah, there's also an island right, a smaller island right off the coast of China that is uh, called Kinmen that is controlled by Taiwan. Um, and so today, as a result of this stalemate, you'll find maps depicting Taiwan both as a part of China as, as well as separate from China which is a very confusing conflict for the outside observer. As you can see in these two maps, they seem to kind of not be in alignment on, on uh, where Taiwan is. And for Taiwanese people living under today's democratic Taiwan, having maps that properly represent their land and national identity is not guaranteed. As a result of the large variance in map quality and political biases of map data, there are a huge number of poorly made maps of Taiwan in news articles, social media posts, etc. As a graphics engineer that has worked for Taiwanese news organizations um, over the past few years, I've had the privilege of putting together maps for elections, climate disasters, COVID-19, and more, often with very little time to do so. For instance, uh, when Taiwan experienced the COVID-19 outbreak earlier this year, uh, my team and I published maps of virus hotspots. It was this need for regular map making by myself, as well as many of my peers in the industry, that led me to work on my open source map projection and pre-compiled topo JSON files for Taiwan, named Taiwan Atlas after the world after the World Atlas and pre, uh, U.S. Atlas pre-built topo JSON files. Um, if you're familiar with U.S. Atlas, uh, oops. Uh, if, you're, if you're familiar with U.S. Atlas or World Atlas, you know how quick and easy it is to import US, U.S. Atlas into D3 and have a base map to work with in just a few lines of code. My goal was to model this as closely as possible, mainly because I wanted to make reaching for a base map of Taiwan with a sensible projection and file size as familiar and easy as possible. So my work on this project boiled down to two distinct tasks. The first step, um, was pre-compiling the topo JSON. Uh, and the second was creating the composite projection. I'll talk about the pre-compiled topo JSON first. Um, to start, uh, the Taiwanese government actually, uh, the Taiwanese government's open data website actually keeps an up-to-date public shapefile delineating Taiwan's administrative levels. 
Um, so this shapefile serves as my raw data for my project. So prior to actually making Taiwan Atlas, this was also the shapefile that I would spend hours simplifying and reprojecting every time I had a new project. And that would take up a significant amount of my time um, every time I worked on a mapping related story. So first, in order to simplify and create all the, uh, I had to create all the different administrative levels from the shapefile into Taco JSON files. So what you see here is uh, like the, you can see the delineation of the counties, the towns, and the villages. Um, and these are made into three different uh, topo JSON files um, with the appropriate level of detail. So in this case, I used a scale of one to 10,000, um, which felt the most appropriate to me. Um, so using this, I generated the nation, county, town, and village level topo JSON files before running it through my custom projection. Um, through this step, I actually found uh, Mike Bostick's tutorials on command line cartography extremely helpful. So if you've never dealt with Topo JSON before, um, I definitely highly recommend giving this a look. Um, I use many of the Topo JSON command line tools to filter, merge, and simplify the map data. Uh, I also used a few commands from MapShaper, um, command line tools to clip and clean. As a bonus, um, I actually also included uh, a layer that includes the legislative districts for each of the location-based legislative seats, um, which is a combination of uh, corresponding county towns or villages, depending on um, population. And actually, this is a very, very, very useful uh, mapping for elections-related projects like the one you see here. Um, the next challenge would be creating a composite projection. So at first, to me, the idea of making a custom projection for Taiwan seemed really daunting um, as someone with no formal training in cartography. Um, but after browsing around the open source community, I found I discovered D3 composite projections as well as U US Atlas. Um, and D3 composite projections actually uh, is is a collection of a few composite projections for a few different countries. So as you can see, there's France and there's Japan here. Um, this repository and US Atlas helped me immensely with creating my own that would work for Taiwan Atlas. Um, the first part of this was picking a base projection. So as Taiwan lies right on the Tropic of Cancer, I decided to go with a Mercator projection because the Mercator projection does a reasonably good job at preserving shapes and distances around the equator. Taiwan's about at 20 degrees or so, so it's a little bit at that edge of um, what I would deem acceptable, but I, I felt like it, it did a, a, a decent job. To be honest, um, oh, and then my next step was to make the composite projection. Um, and so as you can see here, the areas around the arc outer archipelagos of Pongu, Kinmen, and Matsu Islands, uh, I moved closer to the map in order to make the best use of space. Um, and to be honest, this, this part was simply a lot of trial and error, uh, adjusting offsets, as you see here, until the spacing felt right. Um, I also added frames for each of the relocated areas to be optionally displayed. Um, and so the that's it. the the final pro The final product is a composite projection um, and many compiled topo JSON files, um, including the unprojected as well as the projected ones. So the files included in the in in the final product include, for example, like town, county, and there's a simplified sim simplified topo JSON as well as the projected one, uh, town, etc. A total of 10 Topo JSON files are created and published to NPM for easy, easy installation and use. Since then, I found it incredibly helpful in my own projects um, and have also seen it used by other news organizations and websites in Taiwan. I've also published a simple observable notebook showcasing how to use the pre-compiled projected Topo JSON in a few simple lines of code. As a small and easily maintainable project, I'm more than happy to support the digital mapping and journalistic community in Taiwan in this way. And seeing it help everyone from journalists to students is very rewarding in its own right. Hopefully this provides some inspiration to those of you who may be interested in creating similar projects for your own country or locality. You can find me 
on Twitter at Diplativo, or you can drop me a note in the GitHub repository, and I'll also be uh, willing to answer questions after this uh, in the Slack or, or I think online as well. So thank you, everyone. Um, and that is my presentation.